Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now, yeah, big amount of bite sized pieces. Today, we got some concerning news, and these are the types of news stories that are going to keep coming out and coming out and coming out. So, I want you to be prepared for what's about to happen. So, first up, critics claim Tesla should sell Bitcoin position. Electric vehicle firms share down 30% since buying. So, we'll take a look at what is hype and what is reality and the uh, numerous news sources that you're going to hear about as far as calling for these huge institutions and corporations to sell their Bitcoin. So we'll take a look at that on top of, I need to talk to you about CryptoTrader.tax and my uh, unbelievable 2,825, what's called missing cost basis detected, which uh, put me through a loop for over two weeks. And I don't want you to fall into this as you're uh, scheduling your taxes. And finally, I just want to talk to you real quick about the HODLer uh, mentality and uh, what you need to do as far as get yourself uh, mentally prepared for the tough road ahead. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Uh, first of all, let me blow this up so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. And uh, here we are. So today it is uh, bah, 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 March 8th, uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Houston, Texas time. Still in the uh, new rental property, fixing it up. Should be done by this week. And then off we go. So what do we have today? Well, uh, over the weekend, Sunday saw a heck of a rally, and I think it was because of India came out and said that they will not be banning cryptocurrency digital assets. The prime minister, she, which some a lot of people uh, corrected me, it is a she. Okay, great, it's a she. But uh, the picture I saw was just a bunch of guys, so whatever. Uh, she came out and said, look, we're not going to ban anything. It's not going to be as uh, awful as you might think and we're gonna to work together uh, with these uh, central banks to come to a conclusion. So some people will have said, well, oh, well, it's not that much and it's not what they're gonna think, but look, it's a step in the right direction. They didn't just come out and said, hey, we're gonna straight ban it, which would really suck for uh, 1.2 billion people in India uh, because they want to actually trade uh, digital assets. So that is a positive. So what do we have? So uh, for the market cap right now, you're looking at uh, almost a trillion market cap for Bitcoin alone, this 949.52. And we're up to 51,000. So that's pretty great. I mean, we'll take uh, we'll, we'll take it. It's not the 58,000 all-time high that we had seen, but uh, hey, right around the corner. Uh, Ethereum, uh, 1743, a little bit of a bump after that. Uh, uh, the Ethereum improvement uh, proposal, uh, 1559, that came into effect, where they're going to uh, pretty much make fees a little bit lower. Uh, but again, in the video yesterday, we talked about this. It's gonna do well, but it's not gonna do that great. They need to do a lot of things with uh, scaling and everything else. I'm hopeful because uh, I own a lot of Ethereum. <laughs> so that would be great. Now, and one more thing before I go on, just so you know, uh, I am uh, what is called uh, biased to all the different things we talk about here. If I'm talking about a project, it's probably because I own it. And uh, that's just it. I know some people will say, oh, I'm not biased, but whatever. If you have, if you're talking about Bitcoin a lot, Probably because you got a lot of Bitcoin. You're talking about Ethereum and Cardano and uh, Chainlink and Theta like me. Probably because you got a lot of that. And that's just the truth. So that's just what it is. Anyhow, so going forward, Tether's Tether. Nobody really cares. Good for them. Binance Coin, hey, in that fourth spot. Um, you know, Cardano was up there, but of course it slipped down for whatever reason. Nothing but great news, whatever. Polkadot, uh, down a little bit in 24 hours, but in the last hour, pretty good. Let's see, what... Here's what I really care about. What's gone up a ton? Well, Uniswap did. If you held for Uniswap all this way, remember it was a 400 token airdrop? Uh, congratulations, because you're up bigly, almost $33. I think Uniswap could do great if they do what PancakeSwap is going to do, which is uh, allow for the Binance Smart Chain. So you, they can use Ethereum ERC20 tokens to pay for gas, or sorry, excuse me, Ethereum to pay for gas, or they can use the uh, Binance Chain. If Uniswap switches over from from that to Binance Chain to a lot of different uh, protocols. I mean, Uniswap will go to the roof. It'll be easily top five. Let's see if uh, that happens. Chainlink uh, up bigly, uh, another partnership announced because they're doing that every single day, it seems like. Bitcoin Cash up a percentage. Yeah, well, Dogecoin, oh, this is funny. So Dogecoin is up 10% in 24 hours. Why? I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, it's because they have, and I, I, I put this in Twitter, Doge is up 10% because of strong fundamentals, a fantastic team working 24-7, and a uh, very detailed roadmap that was just released that goes over the 10-year history and where they're going to go in 10 years. <laughs> just kidding. There's no reason why Dogecoin is up. It's just up. Maybe it was a tweet from Elon. I have no idea. It's just up 10%. Uh, probably because people are talking about it. 
Remember, just take a look at the fundamentals and what's going on. Has, has much changed with Dogecoin? No, not really. It just uh, is what it is. All right. Ave, a big uh, theta is one of the bigger ones, uh, 10%. Remember, they just uh, formed a, not formed a partnership, but Sony is one of their validators on top of uh, Google, on top of Gumi or Gummy, however you say it. And uh, they've got a lot of great people lined up. They're not competing with YouTube for uh, for bandwidth, they're actually uh, working in conjunction with them because they have Google as a validator. So if you got into Theta early, congratulations, like I talked about, it's great. Again, one of my holds. VeChain up, 10% for Raptera, that's gonna be huge, Mike Novogratz's thing. Tezos up 12% in the partnership I think was announced, and that's about it. So let's take a look at the, uh, <clears throat> at the sentiment over the next hour and see what's gonna uh, really pop for all you traders out there. Uh, I'm not one of those. Uh, next, I don't know what that is, Curb Dow, uh, and if you're taking a look at this one hour projected range, this is the high, this is the low, and uh, the middle part, that's with 90% assurance, that's from Trade the Chain. You can check that out in the description. Uh, Ocean Protocol, that looks, I remember this one. One Chain, uh, one that Ian was always talking about, it's finally getting going. And then Chili's up again, 7%, uh, European uh, type of uh, uh, rebates or uh, cards for uh, sports affiliation, stuff like that, so good for them. All right, that's what's going on in the market. Let's just go into today's top story, huh? All right. So today, these are the types of stories you're going to see a lot as we move forward uh, in progression as far as uh, corporations, institutions buying a ton of Bitcoin. So this one talks about cr critics claim Tesla should sell Bitcoin position as electric vehicle firms share down 30% since buying. So when you read this, you're looking at going, oh, well, it's down because Bitcoin's down. And that's the only reason. That's not the reason. That's not the only reason. It's part of the reason. But uh, just be aware. So what's going on here? Well, after Tesla announced the world that there was $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin on its balance sheet, the price of Bitcoin shot up considerably that day. And that was around February 7th, February 8th. Someone checked me in the comments, but it was around that time. On social media forums, critics and even lawyers have called out companies like Tesla for making such decisions. Tesla shares have not fared so well since the purchase, even though the firm did profit nicely from the Bitcoin value increase. So um, I'll get to it in a second. And this was just from some random, uh, this is from, uh, who is this? Imagine the positive momentum Tesla would create. Somebody tweeted if they announced the sale of their Bitcoin position and authorized a Tesla stock buyback instead. And the rest is just boring. I almost fell asleep. So here's the thing. I, I just want you to notice uh, a couple of things. First of all, uh, Tesla stock went down because Bitcoin went down. It's true. That's not the only reason. It Part of the reason is there was a shutdown for their Model 3s or Model Xs, one of those two. There was a, a problem with um, getting parts and um, uh, different things that they needed for, for, for the production line. So that's one. And then there's been some volatility for uh, as they were moving from uh, their California plant to their Texas plant. So that's, that's another thing. And then uh, another part is that, yes, uh, Bitcoin went down and they had a lot, of, a lot of it on there. So when people start to talk about, oh, they should sell their Bitcoin and they should do a buyback or whatever else it is, you have to understand when people hear that, when people who aren't in our space, they're going to look at this and go, see, I told you Bitcoin was nothing. Bitcoin was bad and people are going to sell off. And that's kind of what happened. So it's like it's like a reoccurring event. So one person, you know, you, you have some kind of event over here where Bitcoin sells off for whatever stupid reason. India says again, they're going to ban Bitcoin. Right. So a lot of investors are like, oh, that's like a billion people we want to get out. And then uh, so then that happens. And then the stock price for MicroStrategy for maybe even a mass mutual, I don't know, uh, for a Tesla, all these big institutions that have bought Bitcoin starts to tumble and then people just start to sell off. It's just like a flywheel effect in reverse if you listen to Alex Mashinsky over at Celsius. So you have to be aware this is what's going to happen more and more and more as time goes on. So just be aware of what's happening. So the real question then is what the heck is going on with the stock price? Well, if we take a look at Tesla stock right now. This it was around February 8th, 7th or 8th, when they announced that they were going to be buying Bitcoin. And if you take a look at this, it's not like there was a big push. It was already up all the way back in, and actually I think it was a little bit higher, uh, January 8th. Uh, this is for you know Tesla stock. So if you take a look at what's going on here, well, they've had some pretty great runs. I mean, from all the way back to November 2020, 
October 29th, it was 410. Now we're shooting up to 816, 880, and at some point we're gonna hit 1,000. And then from here, we just see it kind of just tumble down. What happened? Well, is it Bitcoin? Well, no, I mean, it's the things we talked about, but I also wanna make mention of this. See this market cap right here? Let me see if I can blow this up. Bup, bup, bup. Yeah. See this market cap right here? $573 billion. It's a lot of money. Right? It's a lot of market cap. So how does that compare to, oh, I don't know, other big names in the automobile industry? Well, if you take a look at Tesla, it's 573, the next closest one is Toyota. And they are enormous at 206 billion. Volkswagen, 122. Uh, Daimler, Chrysler, uh, Mercedes Benz, 991, GM, 77, by BMW. So, probably the closest five or six really does encompass all of uh, Tesla's market cap. So, is this overbought? Is this overvalued? Potentially. And I think a lot of people took a look at this and go, you know what? Time to get out. Uh, there's only so high we can go. And then what they're going to do is they're going to see, well, as everything tumbles down, and then there's news stories over here where they talk about, it's all because of Bitcoin. Then, of course, they are like, ah, oh, well, I'll just blame it on Bitcoin. I'll just keep selling and then no big deal because they know it's going to go down because more stories. And that's what I talk about. News moves not only this market, but the traditional market. So if you have some type of integration where you can figure out what the latest and greatest news are, you're going to be a winner. Anyhow, that's what's going on. But lastly, I want to finish up with this. Let's take a look at MicroStrategy real quick, shall we? And this is the last five days. And I'm going to pull a ditty. I like using that one, where he says, when in doubt, zoom out. So we're looking at five days, we're like, oh man, this kind of sucks. What happened here? Well, let's take a look at a month. Let's take a look at, ooh, what's this? February 9th. When was MicroStrategy's first purchase of Bitcoin? Well, it was August 11th. Second purchase, September 14th. Third, December 21st, and February 24th. I think there was one more in between there as well. But if we take a look at uh, here for one month, we'll take a look at six months. So all the way back in August, which is even doesn't even read. Let me go back a, a year. The first time that it was purchased was right around here when the stock price was 123. No one, MicroStrategy been, has been trading pretty flat for quite a long time. Let's take a look at five years. A little bit higher here, but mostly flat. So if you take a look at this, here's Bitcoin, meteoric rise, and when I'll probably want right up to here. And then it kind of goes down. I think MicroStrategy is a lot more closely correlated uh, to Bitcoin than Tesla is because MicroStrategy is just a data analytics firm. If you listen to my man, Ryan Gorman, the only thing they do really great is uh, scrape data from Facebook and that's the big thing. But they have been trading pretty sideways as opposed to, take a look at Tesla. Let's take a look at their year. It's just gone up and up and up. And of course it was overvalued and here you go. So when these stories come out, I don't want you to be uh, flabbergasted and be like, oh, I got to sell my Bitcoin now because these institutions are going to sell. They will sell. They will sell. But they're not going to all just get together, you know, like at this one big crux moment and go, let's just get out of it all, you know, all at once. I think it will happen if you pay attention to the four-year cycles I'm always talking about. But for these types of FUD articles, they're not really FUD. There is a little bit of a reality to it. Just be aware this is what's going on and not everybody has all the answers. All right, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's finish up with our last two pieces. So next up, uh, if you're in America, you know that uh, taxes are coming up. Nobody likes that, but that is what it is. So as April 15th approaches, uh, if you don't want to do all these types of uh, you know cost basis analysis and do a spreadsheet and do all these things, just do what I did. Uh, last two years, I've used CryptoTrader.tax. They are friends of the show. They have promoted the show in the past, but I bought them uh, last year before I even really had anything. And uh, since I was talking about all the time, they're like, hey, you wanna uh, be an affiliate? Sure. So uh, there is an affiliate link in the description. You don't have to use it, but if you do, 20% off, just saying. And uh, what we have here is once you put it in, from the time that I got this the first time, so when I put it in, uh, I got all the information, sent it off to my CPA, it took me 30 minutes. I didn't, so oh, easy, because I have API integrations with everything except for a couple like Voyager, which sucks. I buy a lot of my crypto on Voyager now, but uh, you just download the uh, spreadsheet, stick it in there. So when we're taking a look at this, when I get to this third part here, review, just so you know, I'm like, why is there, there it says missing cost bases detected. And then I go on here, I'm like, holy smokes, 
down here in the bottom right it says 2,800 items are missing. I was like, what the heck that happened? And I was like, what? So I had to contact customer support and they emailed me back and they said, hey, genius, you got to click on missing cost basis. They didn't call me genius. I just call myself uh, that, which means I'm an idiot. And uh, here's the missing cost basis I was missing. Not a big deal. And uh, a couple of this was for from Uphold, which I didn't put it in. And then this one was for Voyager. I disposed of, uh, I received, what did I do? Oh, I sold USDC for 500 bucks so I could buy, probably I can buy some more Voyager. And that's what's going on. So if you ever get to this point, just know that there's two parts, the ledger, which is ev everything that you have, and then your missing cost basis, which usually isn't that much. And you can very easily put, fill that in. Just watch this video. It shows you how to do it. Very simple. All right. Let me understand the comment section. Oh, before I forget, uh, if you want to win a free uh, tax report, they have an unlimited one right now. It's, it's a $300 value. In the link in the description, you put in your first name and email, they draw the winner and they just give those away. If you don't want to wait that long, just go. Well, I'll take 20% off. There's also a link. So that's it. Anyhow, uh, let's move on to our last piece. This part. Um, out of all the stories that I talk about, this is the most probably important section I really should delve a lot more into. And it's about the mentality of just holding on. I know everybody will say, you know, you need to hold on forever. And you need to to never, ever sell. And I don't think that's true. I, I think at some point you you want to sell because everybody's different, right? Are you in your 40s like me? No. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, are you, you know, in, in your 20s, you know, have three kids running around and uh, need a bunch of money? Yeah, maybe. Uh, are you in your 70s or 80s and uh, you're like, you know what? I got, I just need some retirement cash or whatever else it is. Everybody's situation is different. So when, I talk, when it talks about you got to hold on for dear life, I don't think that's really true. You do want to, for me, I want to be an investor. Some people want to be a trader. Some people want to be Gordon Gecko and just, you know, run everything. I don't really don't want to do that. But to get the, the mentality is this. In the very beginning, this is how it feels like. You know, it feels like, you know, people like, oh, it's so easy to hold, right? And then when you start to really get into crypto, especially those who are new, it's very tough because you see like, Let's say that you got into, let's say you got into Voyager, right? I know. Rob's a big shill for Voyager. I own it, so I'm biased. What are you going to do? And uh, I did call it a 29 cents. So, I mean, if you would have listened back then, I, I gotta, before I move on, I got to tell you, some people are so ticked off at me because of, I called Voyager at 29 cents and I said, in my, and I'll link the video, January 7th was my 2021 price prediction. I said, this one's going to 30 bucks. And it's the most outrageous one I have because most of them are pretty conservative. I was very wrong on Uniswap. I thought only Uniswap was going to 20. I was wrong about that one. Happily wrong. So people are, I said, 29 cents is Voyager. It's going to go to 30. I set it at 79 cents. I set it at a dollar. I set it at $3. I set it at five. And I set it when it hits all time high at seven. Now it down to like, down to like 628. But I don't know why people are so mad. I mean, if you just would have listened and just done your own research, maybe you would have been a good uh, buy. I don't know. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just saying I think it's going to 30. In my mind, that's where I see it. So when you when you get into investing and you see like Voyager go from 29 cents, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, it 10Xs and it's like at three bucks. You're like, holy smokes, I just made a bunch of money on this. It's crazy. It's tough to hold on because without really seeing the future future, you're like, I don't know if this is really going to make it. And then when it, keeps, when it goes up to like 15x, 20x, or at some point it's going to go 30x, you're like, shoot, I should really start to sell. And that could be true. But to get, how do you know to get from 10x to 15x to 30x, or maybe even 100x for some of you, maybe even a thousand x for some of you. And it just really comes down to um, having set your goals and just kind of setting it and forgetting it like a Ronco food dehydrator. You just kind of put it in there and just go, okay, this is what it is. I have my points and I'm going to get out. Or maybe for you, it's I'm never getting out until I'm like 50 and I'll just wait for, I don't care about this bull run in 2021. If the four-year cycles are correct, you know, we've been falling pretty close for the last 12 years. I'm going to go for the next bull run or the next bull run after that because of these four-year cycles. So when you're looking at, at holding, uh, in the beginning, it's very tough, but just like exercise, getting into shape, eating the right foods, uh, starting a new job, I guess, like, you know, you kind of get into the swing of things. It's just hard when you are forming habits. But if you listen to studies, it takes between two and four weeks to develop habits if you maintain and sustain. So 
This is what it is in the very beginning, but as time goes on, really it's, it's here, people think it's so easy, then people realize it's hard, but as you do it, again, it's just like going to the gym every day. It's just something you do, and then it just becomes second nature, and then this is just in your mind like it's in the back of my mind. So these are the things you have to watch out for, and uh, this is the investor's mentality. The trader's mentality is something different. I don't have that. I mean, I trade very little, but this is how I see it. So if you're ever confused or like, I don't know if I can do it, you can do it. You know, if you want to be an investor, I'm not telling you what to invest in, but the mentality itself I can talk to. Just kind of, you know, put the money in or whatever you're investing into and then just kind of step away and just go, well, I know where I, I think I know where it's going based on these news pieces, based on my research I've done and everything else. So, and lastly, whoops. Lastly, I want to tie this all together with talking about the uh, four-year cycles and the investor mentality and everything else. So when I talk about these, these four-year cycles, just as a quick refresher, um, I'm talking about the having all-time high dip reset, which we've seen over and over again. This was 2012, 2013 was an all-time high, had a big dip in 14, and then 15, we had a big reset. Same thing happened in 2016, we had a having. Then 2017, all-time high, big dip and a reset. Then 2020, it's happening again. We had a halving. Uh, we're hitting all-time highs. We're going to hit, I think, 150K for uh, Bitcoin. And then a dip and then a reset. And the next bull run will start in 2024. 2025 should be another all-time high. So when we do these types of things, and when I talked about these articles and, and what to watch out for as far as what's going to happen with like all these institutions, just know that uh, these things are going to come pretty uh, fa fast and heavy, hard and heavy. But you have to understand that. Um, People are going to have weak hands. Not you, you've been here for a while, but the new ones that FOMO in, which usually they FOMO in right around when everything goes parabolic. And then you're going to have this over here where everything goes parabolic. And then it's going to be the same thing in 2021. Everything goes parabolic. You have a bunch of people just FOMOing in. And the reason I know that people don't know what the heck they're doing is because of this little survey, which we covered a couple of videos ago. More than, more than one in three crypto investors know little nothing about it. Survey fund. These are the ones that are already here, right? I mean, like I said, not you. You probably know exactly what it is and what it's all about and how it's going to change everything. But if you're going to see these newbies coming in and FOMO paper hands, they're going to see articles like this where, you know, Tesla starts to sell off or another institution sells off or maybe another India ban or whatever country. And they're like, oh, that's it. I got to get out. And they're going to pretty much crash the market and you're just going to see a bunch of people just get out. I know people will say, ah, but Rob, you don't understand these institutions are here and they're going to leave. Sure. Sure. Michael Saylor can get away with this because he runs the board, right? But Elon Musk can't. And a lot of these corporations that are going to get in, they are beholden to their stockholders. So they will be the ones that are like, you know what, Rob, we're, we're going to sell a little bit. And once they start selling, everybody else starts selling. I think we're still going to see these four-year cycles uh, just repeat and repeat and repeat because people don't get it. And until people really understand what crypto digital assets are, it just won't make sense to them. And that's why I made this website up here, danteachescrypto.com. It's 100% free. They can learn everything about crypto that they ever wanted to, except for NFTs. I haven't gotten there yet, but I mean the basic, basic stuff. So if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. All I need is your, uh, it's just your first name and email, nothing else. I don't even spam you. And then tell two people so they can understand and they can have stronger hands in the long run. All right. So that's it for today. So if you made it all the way in, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. If you liked the video and you found value, give it a thumbs up. That always helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing. Other things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is it for today. So if you like those, I'll put up uh, two more on left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.